What an amazing way to put it, exactly. 4,000 kilometers centers. Steph has sent you onto the back of this vehicle. We're going to have a quick look here at the sunset going down over the quintessential African scene. The odd tree on the horizon silhouetted gorgeously. There's some weather coming in that has turned this incredible sunset. A thousand shades of pink and ginger and orange and yellow and various other colors that are probably not describable by some with my humble vocabulary. Now, over there, I know we've all been missing, come on Wallington, bring your camera here, um, I know you've all been missing the hyena den deeply at Juma, well, we'll have a look at this one here, and it's a bit of a joy really to find a little hyena den, look, there's a little one with its head out of a tiny little hole, now it's blurry, but soon it will be in focus, <laughs> there we are, and uh, Graham, just to the right of that one, it looks like a gopher has just put its head out of the ground. It's now put its head back in. Whoops. There's a little one there. Look. And apparently these hyenas are heavily researched. It's eating something. Now, one of the things I was saying very early today is that the animals here die faster than they can be killed, if you know what I mean. So more animals here probably die of natural causes than they do from predation, which means that for scavengers, especially vultures, there are vultures all over this place during the day, landing on bits and pieces, carcasses and those sorts of things that we don't see. Um, we don't see them dying, you know, and they, they're killed. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Sorry about that, everybody. Was it all? Yes, it was, but we're back on. Oh dear, Graham said it was off. Sorry about that, everyone. I think I sat on my microphone. So, there are, there are vultures and scavengers eating here all day long. And they're not stealing their kills from anyone. These are things that have just died of natural causes. And I think that these hyenas have an almost limitless food supply. This is just too wonderful, isn't it? There's mum, and there's a hyena researcher, and I think he does an incredible amount of work because I think, as Graham said, Graham watched a talk by, I think, that very fellow in that car there. Some of these hyena dens have been occupied for probably a thousand years, a thousand year old hyena den, which is quite astounding, and so obviously this is optimal hyena territory and hyena habitat but this den site here apparently has been continuously occupied for probably almost that long which is absolutely unbelievable this will be a small portion of the clan the clans in this area can reach really very large numbers indeed and up to sort of 50 or 60 individuals can mass if they want to chase lions or if they want to try and take something or hunt on their own they do a lot of hunting in this area it's not only um, the scavenging that they do and I mean we're we just gonna pan around now there's a Thompson's gazelle there? not too far away there we go you got him there Hello Clarissa, you missed the beginning of the show and you say, where is James? James is in Kenya, believe it or not, and therefore so are you, Clarissa. And we're just trying to find a Thompson's Gazelle that I can see, but the camera is failing to find. <laughs> Clarissa, we're in Kenya. We're broadcasting out of the Mara Triangle, this quite unbelievable piece of land, 510 square kilometers. 350 square miles, part of the greater Mara Serengeti ecosystem of 20,000 square kilometers, which is roughly 1,200, at least 12,000 square miles. And that's where we are. And through the incredible efforts of Peter Bratt and uh, the amazing negotiation skills of Graham Wallington, and not, of course, the not too shabby camera work of the latter, there, uh, we, here we are in the middle of the Mara Triangle bringing you some of the most quintessential shots of African wildlife that you'll ever see. And we've seen some new things, Clarissa, today. We've seen 
hundreds of hundreds of wildebeest, uh, we, thousands and thousands of wildebeest. We've seen crocodile try to eat wildebeest out of the Mara River. The, those amazing sightings of wildebeest crossing the river that we've seen on documentaries and I've never seen live before. Uh, we've seen topi and Thompson's gazelles and lions l l sitting in trees. We've had an unbelievable time here. And Kat in Tampa, you say that um, you were born on the wrong continent. Well, Kat, I'm sorry about that. But you know, these days with air flight, uh, you could always move here. And there's rain there, Graham, I think. I'm I'm just gonna. Just <laughs> <laughs> there's rain there, everybody. Look at that. There's some wildebeest underneath that tree and in the background there is rain falling from the sky. Q Toto soundtrack. Um, sorry I missed the last one Kirsten. What was the last comment we had there? And Vicky, yes, you say it's so different seeing hyenas out in the wide open space as opposed to in our termite mouths. Well, all the animals here, compared with Juma, of course, they live in the open. This is very much a grassland area, and we know that the um, the woodlands of the Sabi sand house, I mean, a huge diversity of animals, but we don't see them in the same way that we do here. And so this is just a great different kind of African adventure that we're having here. It is in some ways a little more difficult because we can't go off-road uh, but for maybe very special sightings and we still try to negotiate our way through that and so it can be a little bit more difficult but because you can see so very far yes I mean it really is unbelievable and the sheer volume of animal life here blows my mind completely and I, in case for those of you who have just joined us like Clar Clarissa one and a half million wildebeest come into this area every year. 300 th up to 500,000 Birchall's zebra, 200,000 Thompson's gazelles, and there are probably any number of others. And you know, those are just wild estimates. Nobody's ever counted them actually. And there's some wildebeest now just wandering across the plains. They've obviously been separated from the much larger herds, which cover this place like. Aaron, you're wondering if we're going to be live again tomorrow. Yes, we probably will once or twice. We're not sure when or how or if. We're trying quite desperately to sort out various things here because we've got a very short time. So, yes, we hope to do some live stuff t tomorrow, absolutely. But we're not going to guarantee anything. You might just be able to hear the wildebeest here going, bow, bow. Robin? We're going to be here only until Wednesday. We actually leave here on Tuesday, and then I'll be back at Juma on Wednesday. And, you know, it's a precursor, we hope, for uh, a, a longer show, and we're hopefully going to be here for a week in September sometime. At the end of September, we hope. And this great swathe of animal life that has migrated into this area will hopefully still be around and I think it will just be unbelievable to be here for that length of time and so hopefully we'll have more of the wildebeest leaping into the water we'll have more of them streaming across the plains we'll have more of these hyenas we're hopefully going to introduce you to the lions of this area hopefully the cheetah and the serval perhaps we've had an amazing time with some serval <laughs> and the topi and the Tom Thompson's gazelles and the Grant's gazelles and all the other amazing things and the birds totally different birds from the ones that we get at home um, I think we're probably going to have to hand you over back to South Africa now things are getting a bit dark now so this will be our last segment this evening thank you for joining us it's been unbelievable brilliant skill from Mr. Wallington thank you Mr. Wallington brilliant skill from Peter Brat our two chaps in front here we've got Robert and Kelvin Robert and Kelvin, wave at the camera. You're on your live television. There they are. They've done a sterling job getting us into the most incredible position to view, of course, that quintessential shot of the wildebeest migration crossing the Great Mara River. We'll see you tomorrow, we hope. Until then, enjoy the rest of your drive with Brent and Steph, and I will be marveling at these unbelievable sights. Bye-bye.